but we will now uh, move the the on to So, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, as I said this morning, my name is Jyoti Steiner. I, um, I got involved last year into two really interesting projects. So, the first one is Ethereum. And there's also Renee down here who can answer some questions about the project. And um, there will be a tutorial tomorrow on Ethereum. Ken and um, Constantine will join, so you can ask a couple of questions. Uh, that would be great. And then there's also um, um, Provenance, um, which is uh, about making supply chains more transparent. So I want to talk about both, and especially how Provenance uses Ethereum um, for, for their goals. Right. So, um, how things are currently, I mean, so how many of you have heard about Ethereum? Okay, so almost everybody. So, who hasn't heard about Ethereum? Okay. So, um, it's kind of a, maybe in one word, just to give you a um, kind of, um, uh, yeah, where, yeah how, or what this thing is. So um, it's kind of a multi-purpose blockchain, so, but I don't want to talk about blockchains at all. So as uh, Vitalik said um, on Friday, many pe I mean, most people in that space don't understand what blockchain change is. So therefore I won't talk about blockchains at all, just about how to use it and what we want to kind of achieve with the thing we're doing. So um, yeah, what's the problem? So how things are really, dis really centralized currently. So there are um, servers sitting at single point of failures um, in our interaction on the internet. Single point of control, single bottlenecks, we all know this. So, um, limitations of the system, um, the systems and, and like operators are partly incompetent, can become compromised, Google, Facebook, NSA, we've seen that. Um, they can become biased, WikiLeaks, suffering from not getting uh, money through um, Visa or PayPal. Um, corrupt, unavailable, unknown. So, lots of problems with that system, how it is. Um, how things should be is, of course, as we all believe, much more decentralized, um, accessible, honest, inclusive, reliable, resilient, transparent. That would be kind of the ideal world. Um, so let me, nonetheless, like kind of at least uh, talk a little bit like what Ethereum is for those who know Bitcoin and still would like to understand a bit what Ethereum does. So Bitcoin kind of allowed us to do peer-to-peer -peer transactions of a really, really simple kind. So Boolean with trivial rules, that's kind of where we have been. And then there's been all the altcoins and what kind of Ethereum likes to achieve from a technical side is um, coming up with a um, pretty flexible language for implementation that allows really um, various rules, I mean, whatever rule you'd like to implement to, to do that. that that's, that's the photo, right? Okay. No, uh, please ask questions um, while I'm talking if you have questions. So, um, yeah. Uh, Jeff sometimes says this is what Ethereum is, a collective of non-localized non single programmable data structures. So if you're a technical person, um, <laughs> that, that might talk to your heart. Um, if you're a bit less technical or just want to know what this is for, it's just an internet protocol software stack that's truly in the hands of its users. So whatever rule you want to implement is the rule that's going to be executed. Um, of course, I would like to... Uh, users to be a bit more diverse, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm not there's a picture. Right, there's a decent stuff, right, right. And short and long hair. Like, yeah, long, yeah, I like that picture. So that's what we uh, we wanted to achieve, kind of having, um, instead of this uh, single um, server that nobody knows what's going <coughs> on, um, replacing that by a decentralized network, a decentralized computer, a decentralized database. Um, so maybe some similes, um, so internet is to communication as Ethereum is to agreement, that's one way to look at it. Um, or Ethereum is to Bitcoin as a smartphone is to a calculus, <laughs> <laughs> to make a bit of advertisement. Um, or Ethereum can be used just to implement whatever you want to decentralize, whatever application um, you like. Okay, so one example of what, where, where we are kind of, that there's maybe a summary of where we are. So um, there has been, has been heavy development going on. So we tried to make implementation really easy for developers. So this is a snapshot of the IDE that's currently being developed. So Ken will probably give an introduction how to use that item tomorrow. So yeah, this is a um, 
the crowdsource uh, fellow uh, helped me save my kittens complex. Um, and yeah, it's a little too small, but um, how the implementation of such a crowdfunding contract could look like really short um, for most web developers, easy to understand. Um, there's also going to be a lot, um, a lot of educational material. Uh, Ethereum Academy um, will hopefully soon be out. So um, yeah, please let me know if you want to know more about how to do things in Ethereum. Um, that being said, so I believe decentralized apps will be the new apps, um, and this is why um, I also got involved with um, provenance. Uh, oh, it's unfortunate. It's a bit, um, yeah, kind of a coffee, um, should see coffee anyway. So provenance is a project that tries to make supply chains much more transparent. Um, why is that, that the case? So, or why do we want to do that? So we at provenance, it's a joint project with my business partner, Jesse Baker, here in London. Um, we believe that um, we just know way too little about the projects that we, the pro products that we surround us with. So I mean, I guess nobody of us can say for sure that the T-shirt was made under modern slavery. Um, and this is one thing we would like to change. So every product has a story, but rarely do we know about the story where things come from. Rarely can we do informed decisions when we go purchase and purchasing or take decisions at shoppers in. Um, in our daily life. Nonetheless, how things are made matter. So we've seen that, we've seen the factory collapse in Bangladesh. Um, products exchange hands every day, but with that, like usually just with paper certificates, I mean, that's so easy to forge. Um, and also like materials that are in the products that we buy are precious, have become ever more precious. So circular economy tries to, um, tries to come up with a paradigm how to design better products. Um, but also needs ways to track material value and, and the material assets that, that, are, um, that are in use. So, um, yeah, but usually, as I said, like most of the time in a shop, we only can make a decision um, based on price or maybe a performance of a bicycle, but not whether it was made um, by under good conditions, like respecting um, good working conditions, that the steel came from a or of a certain degree. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what we are trying to change at Provenance. So we develop digital tools, um, web applications um, that make these stories accessible and help to change um, and show how companies look um, inside. So this, is, this was an experimental, um, an experiment where we tried to come up with kind of a uh, receipt that you could come up that you would receive in a shop when you buy a product and that tells you about the whole story. Um, that could be kind of the user experience that we envision. Um, yeah, so what's the problem with the supply chain? So why do we not know more about the, the products that we buy? So one thing definitely um, that hinders us is that um, so it's quite difficult that to have free information flow. So actors in supply chains are quite concerned about their um, business secrets, so there might be issues with competitive, ab competitive advantage. But we think blockchains can help to make information more fluent along supply chains. So yeah, Jesse and I discovered Ethereum last year, started thinking about what to do with it, how to use it. And um, now we are building a dev actually, um, so we, we want to change our material world. Um, and this is what we imagine, like a digital guarantee of total authenticity, complete traceability for your products, tea, diamonds, whatever product you have, and whatever you would like to know more about that product. Powered by the blockchain. So we are building a DAP, um, a web application, in order to achieve full supply chain and -to -end transparency, protecting the critical business information, yet allowing for seamless access. Um, to guarantee full authenticity, full retention of material value. Um, using, as I said, the Ethereum blockchain, smart contracts, but then also digital tags to, to log and link um, stuff to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to their database. Um, yeah, let's maybe um, just quickly jump to a, to a uh, use case, how things could look like. So think of a bicycle frame, so stuff you would like to know and, and what, like to be sure about that, that this is true information might be 
the particular um, grade of steel that goes into the frame. Um, it might be a um, particular way of welding um, by the manufacturer that is confirmed, um, whatever you would like to know about the shop. Um, and then, for example, you would like to record as a user what happened to the bicycle during use, use, uh, usage time because you want to sell or resell that bicycle and it might be useful to prove that you did services and can kind of have a timestamp of that service. So, yeah, um, this is one of the first, I think, non-financial um, applications um, that people are thinking about and I think it's a really interesting idea. Um, in order to achieve more honest product stories. Um, where we are is we've done wireframing, we've done some basic coding um, on the backend side on Ethereum, um, and now we are looking for developers, designers, but also for um, manufacturers, SMEs, but also larger companies that would like to, um, to pioneer and develop this application with us. this being applied to deforestation? Um, you mean to prevent deforestation? Yeah, to be able to see and to involve community. Yeah, yeah I, could see, I mean, I could see that, that you prove kind of for, I mean, so, so <coughs> you talked a little bit about the projects um, that, that kind of try to achieve um, similar things. So there's WikiRate that takes more of this blaming approach, like kind of identifying where things go wrong. So we are here for, the good businesses to help them to shine. So that if there is like community that has good practices and, and does sustainable foresting, um, that could be proved and, and traced back. That would be ideal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two more questions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how would you translate this really uh, real world, not digital uh, things that happen in supply chains to smart contracts that are I think it's one of the main issues you, you might have because a company might claim I'm not using uh, modern slavery, but how do you prove that over Ethereum? So in some cases it might be just about the authenticity of data that, that you know we heard about like um, the way how we used to do statistics was like came with lots of authenticity how we have big data and we don't know where things came from or open data and don't have any proof. So that could be one thing that, that the blockchain enables, but then also if a product is linked to the blockchain by a digital tag, you could do the actual transaction on the chain and, and have that recorded. So that, that could be one thing. Yeah. I mean, in the long run, I could see smart contracts also for um, ideas like the web of needs, so where people can gather kind of in a crowdsourced manner and, and that, like in that way, um, make their needs accessible, which could be, I want sustainable products, and then you find suppliers, for example, through smart contracts, or smart contracts and enabling these interactions. Now, last question. Yeah. Um, if I understood well, this is for the, if I have, I mean, for like the good, the ones that are doing it properly, it they would use it. But the ones that are not doing it properly, they, they would just try basically not use it at all, mm -hmm. right? I would see that, yeah. yeah. So I guess, I mean, you could ask, can I yeah, use that system? Yeah. And of course, it's just the technology in the first place. Yeah. But then um, kind of coming up with an untrue story and trying to prove that, that everything is well in your supply chain and, and just, yeah, ma making up this story, I think is really difficult. So. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, just, uh, I wouldn't go just for the, the, the way of I can forge it, but as you are relying on the user to sign it, mm -hmm. instead of crowdsourcing like, okay, this company is doing it bad and we have all these groups and all these people saying it, which would be an automatic approach in order to introduce the bad guys <coughs> into the platform and just so trying to bring it up. Uh, so one, I don't know whether I must I get your question right, but one thing, so I'm seeing this as a really inclusive platform, so one thing that could happen is if you're traveling, I don't know, to South America and you're visiting this coffee farm, you could just upload a photo and we make sure there's kind of a way that you link that to, 
to that farmer. So there could be crowdsourced, um, authenticated certification. That's why. Thank you.